after a secret affair and a child born in secrecy. Now he wants to be part of our lives. Can I trust his change of heart, or is it just another manipulation to complicate my son's future even more? I, female 26, had an affair with a married man, male 42 a few years ago. I had no clue he was married when we first met and hooked up. I obviously looked him up on social media and while he did have photos of his kids on there, there was absolutely no mention or photos of a wife at all. I found out that he was married about a month after we first got together, but he told me it was just a marriage on paper and that they basically lived separate lives and agreed to remain married for practical purposes until the kids were older. They owned a business which she really ran and he was just financially involved in. I knew at the time that I probably shouldn't believe him, but I convinced myself it was true. I was in my early 20s and so attracted to him and I guess almost infatuated with him. H, he made me feel so good. I know now that I should have ended it immediately but I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. I was addicted to all of the attention he gave me, the great sex, the places he'd take M, E. I felt special. I was so naive. I got pregnant about a year into seeing him. I had always been so careful with preventing pregnancy, but during my relationship with him, I took stupid risks. I was so high in lust with this guy, it's embarrassing. The things he'd asked me to do, I'd say yes to almost anything, even when I knew it was a bad idea. I was in love with him, or I thought I was. I hadn't intentionally wanted to get pregnant. I would, of course, dream about being his wife and having a family, but I knew that wouldn't be a possibility while he had this arrangement with his actual wife. I didn't get pregnant on purpose with any intention of him leaving her for me, even if I wished that we could be a real, normal couple. I was surprised by how excited I was to be pregnant with his baby. I wanted that baby once I found out I was pregnant. The thought of carrying this baby of the man I loved was so special to me, but I knew he probably wouldn't feel the same. I told him I was pregnant and he told me I couldn't keep the baby. I expected his reaction, but I was devastated, and it hurt me to my core that he didn't feel the same way I did. He offered to pay to make a whole weekend of it somewhere exciting with the F and to buy me something special if I'd just please get rid of the baby. He explained that he didn't want any more kids and that he couldn't openly be a father to another kid when he and his wife were still pretending to be happily married to the outside world. I agreed to do what he wanted and we made plans for him to pick me up and find somewhere out of town to go get it done. I was all packed the night he was going to pick me up, but I started to feel really scared and really unsafe about the whole thing. I took my bag and checked myself into a hotel to hide because I couldn't go with him. I texted him to say I promised to never contact him again and to never name him as the father or go after child support if he'd promised to leave me alone. A, T, first he tried to sweet talk me into doing what he wanted. When I didn't cave in, he said some very nasty things to me and that I essentially better never contact him again or show up at his door. I have a two year old now. A times, it's been difficult, but overall we are thriving as best we can. I have kept my word about not naming him as the father or requesting child support. His wife contacted me on social media. Well, she's his ex-wife now. She wants to talk to me. She found out about me and told me that she divorced him six months ago. She wants her children to know their siblings and for my child to know his siblings. That's weird to me. I haven't responded back to her yet. I am unsure about how to approach this. How do I respond to this? I wonder if I'm being selfish by not exploring an option for my child to know his siblings, if she's being genuine about that. If I was married and my husband fathered a child outside of our marriage. I don't think I'd feel the same that she does. Relevant comments comment one I didn't know he was married when we first got together. I acknowledge that I should have ended the relationship as soon as I found out he was married. I allowed myself to believe what he told me, which made it seem not so bad. Like this was some sort of agreement he and his wife had. Emotionally, I was already hooked. I'm not making excuses. I wouldn't say I was happy to bring a baby into this situation. There was a huge mix of emotions. I felt like I was in love with him, so there was a part of me that was excited at first. That feeling soon died, but I still felt that I loved my baby still. I tried to do the best thing that I could, which was to remove myself from his life and his family's life. I just wanted to be able to keep my baby and love my baby. I did not get pregnant on purpose. I wasn't on birth control. I had been on birth control when I was slightly younger and had life-threatening health complications as a result. H. He knew I wasn't on birth control. He loved unprotected sex. I was stupid and I agreed to do IT. I would do almost anything he asked sexually. I tried to track my cycle and would tell him when it was probably not a safe time to do it. His wife isn't really what I'm afraid of. Oh, whatever she'd want to say to me is probably deserved anyway, and more. Comment 2. He found out about the pregnancy before I ghosted him, and upon finding out I was pregnant with his child. There was absolutely no real discussion about what we were going to do. We were going to do what he wanted to do and he had it all planned out. He threatened me, 
by text and by phone calls and voicemails when I told him I was not going to go with him on this abortion vacation he had planned. I begged him to please not force me to do that and he turned mean dot, offered to never contact him again if he'd just let me go. After threatening me again about what he'd do if I didn't keep my word, he agreed. He has kept his side of the bargain and has never contacted me.comment3. I've been assuming that she found out about me on her own, maybe saw something on his phone or computer and has probably known for a while before reaching out to me, if it's actually her. Um, I get what some people are saying about siblings and such, but that man is not my child's dad. He is the dad of his older kids, but he's not the dad of my kid. I'm still young and I hope to have more children one day and those children would be my son's siblings. I hope to find a man who loves me and my son and with whom I can have a legitimate relationship. I haven't been with another man since I ended things with this guy. I actually just went on two dates for the first time very recently. I'm not desperate to find a man right now, but I hope to find real love one day. Those people are not my son's family. He's two, and they're old enough to drive. So I don't think they're missing out on any sort of important relationship right now. I understand wanting to know your bio family, and I feel he can decide that later on when he's old enough to have a day. Depending on where we are in our lives at the time, he might not feel a need to know those people. I don't plan to lie to my son about his conception, but I don't think we need to involve ourselves with the man's ex-wife and teenage children at this time. Update one: I made a post three weeks ago, and things have only gotten stranger. I had an affair with a married man a few years ago. I regret it and I will never do anything like that ever again. I knew it was wrong from the very beginning, but he captivated me up I was naive. I allowed myself to believe when he told me they were pretty much just married on paper for the sake of their kids. I got pregnant and while he tried to talk me into getting an abortion, I ultimately decided to keep the baby. I have a two-year-old little boy now. I promised this man that I wouldn't expose our affair and I wouldn't formally identify him as the father or request child support. I did that because he was becoming very nasty about the whole thing and I felt like due to the mess that I had created and the way I felt by the end of it, a clean break with no involvement with him would be the best thing for everyone. I moved back to where my family is, hundreds of miles from where he and his family live. About a month ago, his ex-wife reached out to me via social media, claiming they had been divorced for six months and that she wanted our children to be able to know each other. Now their kids are teenagers, so I didn't really think they'd want anything to do with the toddler and the woman their father was having an affair with dot it, odd to me. After posting here, I sort of decided that I wouldn't respond to her. I'd just ignore it dot she just sent me one message, so it wasn't as if she was badgering me about talking to me or meeting me. On Friday night, I decided to message her. I don't really know why that I think it was really just for my sake so I could have the chance to apologize to her. I told her that I would be more comfortable speaking with her face to face since I couldn't trust that it was really her. She said she understood that I was too nervous to meet her in person but we did a video chat. I didn't know what to expect if this was all a ploy just to unleash her fury on me or what. I mean, I deserve that dot she wouldn't be wrong to feel that way. It was really her. She told me she discovered our affair when she found communications between the two of us after our relationship had ended. She told me I'm one of many women he had affairs with over the years, and she knew about somebody even before he met me, but she didn't divorce him at the time. Finding out about my child was the final straw for her. I told her I was sorry for my relationship with her husband and admitted that I knew he was married. She graciously told me she forgives me and that while she harbored a lot of anger towards me initially, she ultimately blames her husband. I'm not blameless, but she chooses to not hate me essentially. She said she couldn't have said this six months ago or a year ago when she first found out about me, but she has moved past that dot she still has anger toward him. In addition to many other emotions surrounding him, she started pouring out her heart to me about their 20-plus year marriage and life together and it was very awkward because what do I even say? Her kids know about me and my son. She says they're very mad at their father. Somehow I don't think they're mad about the fact that he's not involved with my son's life and why would they be mad about that? I would hate myself if I were them. I told her that with my son being so little right now, I don't really feel comfortable with him meeting her kids or being involved with their family. I feel unsure about it and it's just not something I feel needs to happen right now. Then she told me her ex-husband was in a bad accident two months ago. He's fine now, still not allowed to return to all his normal activities just yet but will be fine. He is probably the most physically active person I've ever met, barely ever seems to sit down. So he must be terribly annoying to be around if he's not allowed to go, go, go all the time. She told me he wants to meet my son. Apparently she moved back in with him temporarily when he first came home from the hospital. She said the accident really shook him up and he has been expressing a lot of regret about my son not being involved, not providing for him. So now it's like was everything she said just a lie and he somehow got her to reach out to me on his behalf. And she actually did it. It felt almost like a relief talking to her initially, but then it's like, was any of that true or you were just trying to be his messenger? I don't even know if that part is true now. Why wouldn't he just contact me himself? I'm just feeling so uneasy about the whole thing now. Relevant comments comment one, I don't believe. 
I have to involve his teenage children in my son's life. Maybe when my son is old enough to decide if he wants that. He is not named on the birth certificate and I do not receive child support from him. I have asked nothing of him, except to let me move away and not try to force me to have an abortion. I basically had to promise him to not contact him, not make him as the father, not request child support. If he truly wants involvement with my son, he can reach out to me directly and he can take the legal route to establish himself as our son's father. Comment 2. He did not legally sever his .h. He never established rights in the first place. He has no rights until he goes to court and establishes himself as the father. He is welcome to do that. Honestly, I wish my son did have a father who was involved in his life and loved him. Yes, this guy has faults, but he has plenty of positive qualities. He is really involved with his older children. I met them many times because they'd be at work with him, or he'd have to drop by the office on his way to take them somewhere. He was always doing things with them. They seem like good kids who really love their dad. I wish my son could have that experience too. I didn't think it was an option based on how he behaved when I was pregnant. He wasn't interested and wanted me and our baby to go away. That's what I did. And I accepted it. Comment 3. He is not legally my son's father at this time. This means that currently he has no legal parental rights or responsibilities regarding my son. I cannot stop him from taking the legal steps to establish paternity if he wishes to do so. He will always be my son's biological father. I can't change that fact. Regardless of whether or not he ever legally establishes paternity, my son will likely be curious about his biological father and who knows. Maybe they will establish a relationship one day regardless of legal paternity. There is no way to say if I will meet a man who may want to adopt my son one day, thus becoming his legal father. I'd something that I think would be nice, but nothing that I'm intent on doing. By choice, I've only been on two dates since my son was born and that was only within the year 2024. I realized that it will not be as simple as signing a piece of paper. Update 2 I posted about this a few months ago. To summarize very quickly, when I was fresh out of college, I had an affair with a married man and father. I became pregnant. H. E. wanted me to get an abortion. He had arranged to take me away on a vacation to get an abortion. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I agreed to go along with what we wanted. Dot at the last minute, when he was on his way to come pick me up, I told him I couldn't go through with the abortion. I just really didn't feel comfortable about his plan and how he was orchestrating everything. It scared M. E. Dot. I realized at that time how deep I had gone with this mistake, how screwed up the whole relationship was. He was really mad. He threatened me, said a lot of nasty things to me. I told him if he just left me alone and let me have my baby, then I'd leave him alone and wouldn't name him as the father or seek child support. I moved back home, I was living in a different state when I met him. I kept my word and I didn't name him as the father or seek to establish paternity. I have never sought child support. My child is two now. A few months ago, his wife contacted me via social media. At T first, she made it seem like she wanted my child to have the opportunity to know his siblings. It was sort of weird since the siblings are teenagers. She said she had divorced him six months prior. I agreed to talk to her virtually, not in person. I felt that I owed it to her to apologize for what I had done. I do feel bad about IT. But at the end of the conversation, I told her that I didn't feel it was the appropriate time to connect my son with her kids. He's a toddler and in their teens, plus I had promised her husband to stay out of his life. That's when she told me that he was recently in a bad accident and she had been helping to take care of him. Supposedly he was going to be fine and was fairly recovered at that point, but she said he had expressed interest to meet our child, so she was basically his messenger. I have not been in contact with her since then. I deleted my social media. I don't know why, but the whole thing just really made me uncomfortable. Since I last posted here. Then I received a handwritten letter from him. In it, he expressed how he wanted to get to know our son. He wants to be a father to our son. He wants to provide financially for him. He'd like us to come visit him. He asked me to sign a paternity affidavit. I refused to do so. I know he is my son's father, but I'm not going to make this that easy for him. After the things he said to me and threatened me with, he at least has to work for this. At that point, my parents felt that we needed to meet with a lawyer. All communication from me has gone through a lawyer. I have never responded to him personally. Ash directly. Now I have a court order for paternity. I have to present my son to have a specimen taken tomorrow. I already know what it's going to say. It's not that I don't want my son to have a dad in his life. It's just the whole situation is a mess. And he lives a few states away from M. E. I don't know what to do. I can't really do anything. He's doing things legally. Next, I'm sure he'll petition for some form of custody or visitation. He's not married anymore, supposedly, but he's a lot more established than I am. He has considerably more financial resources. I also know he has all sorts of connections where he lives. Luckily, they don't hold as much weight here in my state, but it's still so scary to me. I'm a bad mom. I brought my son into this world knowing it was a messy situation. I just got so comfortable with it just being the two of us and now I don't want to give that up. Relevant comments OP on if the father would be moving closer to her 
and her son now that he's divorced from his ex-wife.op answer to touch on just a few things. I don't think he'll move away from where he lives. He has way too much established there. He's in his early 40s. I don't know how this supposed accident, if that even really happened, has affected him, but he was incredibly physically active when I knew him. He only slept like four hours a night, took a 20-minute power nap daily, and rarely ever sat down. H. He was also highly involved in his children's lives. I'd even say overprotective, like a helicopter dad instead of the typical helicopter mom. Careless underscore welder underscore 4048. How did he have time to cheat? OP answer, he only slept a few hours a night and moved at about a million miles a minute. Everyone joked at about it. Somehow he always had time to get up at 5 a.m., go surfing, do some work, take his kids to school, do some work, take his power nap, get coffee, pick his kids up after school and take them wakeboarding or some other sort of thing like that, do some more work, be at his kids' basketball game and so on and so forth. He literally never ever stopped. I was just another thing to help fill out his calendar to prevent him from getting bored. OP on the father's relationship with his ex-wife and their children. OP answered I also don't think he and his wife had much of a relationship although it wasn't quite as he described it to me. They lived in the same house, but I believe they lived pretty separate lives. He bought her a business to give her something to do and keep her busy. She was there most of the time. They didn't even go to their kids' activities together. He was always the one going. S. Oh, I think that freed up time too. I don't think they liked being around each other, so she was happy to have him out of the house. She admitted to me that I wasn't the first affair he had and she knew about most of the time we were together. Another update on how stupid I am, or I had a baby as a result of an affair and now his wife is reaching out to me. I won't rehash the whole thing here. My previous posts are on my profile. I got pregnant from an affair with a married guy. He wanted me to have an abortion. I decided I didn't want one. He turned mean. I promised to not name him as the father legally or to pursue any sort of child support. I moved away from where he and his family were located. I'm about 12 hours away from him now, back where my family is from. I haven't reached out to him in over three years since. His ex-wife reached out to me out of the blue via social media, initially claiming she wanted to connect with me so that our kids could know each other. When I politely declined for the time being, as her kids are teenagers and my son is a toddler and we live states apart, she revealed she was really reaching out on behalf of her ex-husband who had supposedly had a change of heart about being involved in our child's life after nearly dying in an accident. I did not engage with her any further after that. It all made me feel very uncomfortable. Later, I received a letter from him in the mail. H. E. asked to be involved with our son, to provide for him, etc. It still felt weird. I mean, he turned really mean and didn't want anything to do with me or our baby and hadn't made a neat attempt to contact me in years. And I was not hiding. His wife was obviously able to find me on social media, and you can find my address online. I felt like if he was serious, he'd take the steps to establish paternity legally. And that's what he did. Around 1.5 months ago, we were ordered to submit Deanna samples for a paternity test. It took around five weeks to find out what I already knew it say. But now things are stalled for another several weeks for the next step in the court process. I haven't talked to him at all during this whole thing. I didn't respond directly to his letter. I do have a lawyer and everything is basically going through him now. Then, without any warning, he just showed up at my home last weekend just knocked on the door like it was nothing. Basically, this is his son and he doesn't want to wait another six weeks for the court to inevitably order us into some sort of custody mediation anyway. His words. Why can't I just talk to him? I told him he made me uncomfortable and him just showing up at my house really made me uncomfortable. Honestly, I don't know what made me so uncomfortable. The fact that he showed up unannounced like that or the fact that I instantly felt the same attraction to him that I had when I was with him and I didn't want to feel that at all. In some weird way, part of me felt happy to see him, and then another part of me was disgusted that I was happy. He said he doesn't understand why we can't just talk about this. He's not trying to take my son away from me. He just wants to be involved in his life and to help provide for him like he should have been all along. He's sorry he wasn't there when he was born. He's sorry he reacted the way that he did when I didn't go along with his plans to take me on an abortion vacation. Why can't I believe that he just wants to be a dad to his kid? I guess I agree with him. Why can't I just accept that he has had a change of heart? I can't trust myself. I can't trust my own judgment. I feel like if I easily let him into my son's life, I'm going to end up regretting it and be made a fool of somehow. I've already made so many mistakes when it comes to him. H. E. says it's stupid of me to not try to work it out amongst ourselves first.
I'm giving so much control to the court. I don't know whether to believe that or to think it's just his way of convincing me to do what he wants. I know he will get some sort of visitation and eventual custody. Maybe it would be better if we try to come to an agreement, but he had the ability to sway me so easily. I'm so stupid when it comes to him. Nobody else has ever made me feel so foolish in my life. I want my son to have a dad. I admit it's probably selfish of me to want to keep him away. I just keep imagining having to spend weeks or a month apart from my child while he's living with his dad 12 hours away, and I can't stand the thought of it. I'm just feeling sad, stupid, and defeated. Relevant comments OP on if the father is actually divorced from his wife. OP answer, I checked the county records and they did actually get divorced. Mammoth underscore my 8,171. At this point, you need to trust your lawyer. Hopefully he is a good one. Make sure that your lawyer has all the facts, including how poorly he treated you when he found out you were pregnant. Do not communicate anymore with your ex especially since you know that you're incapable of making good decisions when he is involved. You may need to prepare yourself mentally that your ex is eventually going to play a role in your kid's life, as much as that sucks. Hopefully you can go after him for back child support. OP answer. My lawyer has any and all information that I possibly had to share. I am already preparing myself that he will likely have a role in my child's life. I mean, the change will be difficult for me and I honestly don't want anything to change. But I'm trying to focus on any shred of positive outcome this could have for my son. He deserves a dad. I wish it wasn't in this situation. I wish I had given him two loving parents in a stable relationship, the ideal. I wish I had at least given him a father who didn't live states away. I feel bad that my son has two lying cheaters for parents. I truly do feel so embarrassed about our behavior in a new way I did before, ever since my son was born. Other than that whole thing and the fact that he's apparently had affairs with multiple women according to his ex-wife, he actually seems like a good dad to his teenage kids. He was always very involved with them. I guess I'm just trying to cling to whatever positive things I can think of. He can also provide a lot more financially than I currently can. That's scary for me because I'm already turning it into some sort of competition between us and my head. Several points for him, none for me. Plus, my son is also very shy. He doesn't do well if me or one of my parents isn't there with him. I'm just now getting him involved in more activities with other kids and safe, trusted adults. But he still just clings to me. My heart breaks when I think of him meeting a strange man he doesn't know and me not being there. I want to be there. Plus, I think that's how things normally go for him. And to be perfectly honest, that's how I used to be for him too. Just go along with what he wants. He was obviously expecting me when he showed up in person. H. He genuinely seemed surprised I didn't cave into his requests right on the spot. The previous version of me probably would have. OP on how the father managed to find her address. OP answer. H. He sent me a letter in the mail previously. I googled myself and my address came up easily. Admittedly, I made no effort to hide myself after moving away. I didn't think I needed to. He had no interest in being involved with our baby and I promised to never contact him again. So I thought that was the end of IT. His ex-wife told me he was in a bad accident when I talked to her. It's not too surprising based on his hobbies. He lives at like 200 miles per minute. According to her, she had to move back into their house to take care of him while he recovered. When he showed up here, he didn't look like somebody who had been in a life-threatening accident not too terribly long ago. He told me he's fully recovered and, although he'll probably have back issues the rest of his life, he's perfectly fine. OP on having a visitation plan with the father for her son OP answer. My lawyer says that other than creating a graduated visitation plan based on the fact that my son doesn't know this man, the fact that he hasn't been involved in his child's life for the last three years won't mean much to the court. Their ultimate goal is for a child to have two parents. I screwed myself over by not naming him as the father at birth or trying to establish paternity in any way. Had I done that and he fought it, neglected to pay court-ordered child support, etc., then we could have a better case as far as abandonment goes. He is putting in the effort to establish paternity now, is willing to pay child support, so he says, and is presumably going to tell the court he wants to see his kid and this is going to reflect positively for him, despite not being involved for three years. New update. Since everyone got mad at me for posting a recap of my situation in my previous posts, I won't even go there. If you're interested in the backstory, you can read my previous posts. All I will say is that I have a three-year-old son who was conceived in an affair I had with a married man. After initially making me promise to not contact him, to not name him as the father, and to not request child support, my child's father has been pursuing involvement in our son's life over the last several months. He lives states away and most recently he showed up at my house to try to convince me to work things out directly with him. Since the last time I posted. We've recently had a mediation session and he's met our son twice. At this time, he will have supervised visitation with me present. Because he lives states away, he is required to come here to see our son. It will not be on a weekly basis due to the travel. He will see him during two weeks of the month, two times each week, 
for a total of four visits a month plus two video calls a month. This will last for six months. The next step will be for him to continue that schedule, but to have unsupervised visitation during which he cannot remove him from the area for another six months. Um, after a year, we agreed to have another mediation session to determine next steps with the goal, his goal of being able to have my son at his home for short overnights. I'm not even ready to discuss that. He's already suggesting I can come for the first few times. I don't like the sound of it at all. Um, we also have the option to request another mediation before one year and something tells me he's going to pull that. I also have an order for child support. While he is in agreement with paying child support, it will have to work through the court system before becoming official and for me to start getting the regular payment. He wrote me a large check in the meantime. I was hesitant to accept it. Not that I don't think my son deserves it, but now I'm just always worried I'll say or do the wrong thing legally, completely unknowingly, and shoot myself in the foot. Like, am I obligating myself and my son to anything by accepting this check? Can he somehow spin this against me? Of course, he was not in favor of the six-month of six-month plan, and while he does understand that my son should not just go off with a stranger upon first meeting him, he wishes we could speed it along a little more. But six months was what we were able to agree on. H. He wanted to fly us both to where he lived so he could spend a week or two getting to know our son, but I don't feel that's appropriate at this time. Perhaps in a few months or around the holidays, depending on how things are going, it would be too much too soon. The initial two meetings went pretty much just as I thought they would. My son is extremely shy. He wanted to hide behind me most of the time. Then when he would venture out from behind me, as soon as his dad would say anything to him, he would scurry back behind me and just stare at his dad blankly without saying anything. He came out of his shell a little bit. However, he has still not said a single word to his dad. He just pretends like his dad isn't there and only talks to me. I will say that his dad is being patient and understanding as far as that goes. If he's frustrated, he's not showing it. He did suggest that maybe our son needs to get out more, go to daycare more of even preschool instead of spending so much time with me and my parents. He's very delighted with how much our son looks like him and how much he favors him over me. The one thing that did bother me is that I already told him I wanted to be very careful and mindful of how we informed our son, this little barely three or three year old boy, that this man complete stranger is his dad. He said, sure. Yeah dot. Then at the first meeting he introduced himself as dad. Since then I've been trying to help my son understand. Like you know how your grandpa is my daddy, this guy is your daddy. It's so surreal to me that any of this is happening. I feel like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm waiting for something to blow up in my face. Dot. Now it's just working on accepting our new reality. All of this change is hard and confusing for my son and it's hard for me. Unless he really fucks up, I'm looking at eventually shared times with my son spending school breaks and holidays at his dad's house hours and hours away in another state. It won't happen tomorrow, but it will happen in the most likely reality. I just hope he stays committed. If he can be a good dad to my child, then my child deserves that, no matter how sad sharing him makes me. If he breaks my son's heart, that'll be another story and I won't accept that so readily. Irrelevant comments OP on the times when her son has to go visit his father and what the courts are deciding on. OP answer, they haven't ordered him to visit his father in his state, but eventually that will prob probably happen. Talking elementary school age. Worldly promise 675. I hope it all works out as well as it can given the circumstances. Your son and his well-being is definitely top priority. The baby daddy seems really pushy and doesn't like boundaries, so it does not seem he's changed much. OP answer, he's used to getting his way. I'm doing my best to not just roll over but also learn to compromise. Dada Malayla, are you concerned that he may also try to push the idea of reconciling romantically? It sounds like you are focused on your son and he's focused on getting his way. OP answer. I don't know. H. He hasn't really given me that impression. He's given me compliments. He's tried reminding me of some of the good times we had together, but I see that as all part of his schmoozing to just get me to do what he wants, not to get back together with me. OP on getting a therapist for her son. OP answer. Yes, I'm working on finding a therapist for him. I realize I should have started that process before this all went into action. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, Please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real life stories happening around you.